is up, guys? I'm Freetography, and I'm here with a special guest, and she is Victoria. Say hello, Victoria. Hi. Okay, what we're going to do today is we are going to teach you how to do levitation photography and how to post, process, and make a file in Adobe Lightroom and, uh, and Photoshop, all right? So this is my first time doing a tutorial, so bear with me, and let's see how it goes. So what you're looking at on the screen right now is the room that we did the photo shoot in. All right, so we're gonna take a picture from this picture and this picture to create this picture right here. So it makes it look like she's levitating. That's right. So put yourself in the room. You're the photographer, you have your model. You've got your tripod and your camera. First thing you wanna do is set up your scene and exactly how you want the picture to look. Then you're going to take a picture of the room with nothing in it, which is this picture that you see right here. Then you're going to take your model. For me, my model is my 11-year-old daughter, Victoria. Yep. And anything that she can uh, support herself with, like a stool that we used here, you're going to put the stool in place. You're not going to move your camera. Your camera stays exactly as it is in the first picture that you took. Or else it won't work. That's right. Then you set up your model on the stool and you put her in position in a, in a way that looks like she's floating. It always is better to have a flowing dress, as you can see right here on my it's cursor, a boy. Then, then you do something different. If it's a boy, you do something different. If it's a girl, she should be wearing a flowing dress. And now, when I took this picture, I should have positioned her dress better, but we can fix that in Photoshop. But if you want, don't want to have to fix it in Photoshop, then have a flowing dress and, and have it flowing down over the stool to make it a lot easier in post-processing. Then there you go. You have picture one, you have picture two, and then when we're done, we're going to have picture three. So first thing you want to do is you want to open up Adobe Lightroom, which is what I recommend that everybody uses. Lightroom is probably the best for doing this type of thing. You're going to go right down here and you're going to do import. Then you have to find your file. So we go to the desktop and it is in, I believe it's untitled folder. No, that's my wife. No. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> then, then, so you want to find your folder, which is called Levitation. You're going to pick all three files and you're going to import. Okay. So here they come. Just takes a couple seconds. So now you are in Lightroom and you have your pictures. We actually don't need this picture, so I'm going to delete that. Just remove. Okay, first things first. You're going to select both pictures and you're going to apply the same edits to both pictures. So you're going to start by selecting one, hold down your shift button, select the other one. You're going to click your develop tab. Give it a minute. All right, so now we are in the develop tab of Lightroom and you have both pictures uh, selected. What you're going to do here is you're going to hit sync right here. Hit the sync button and everything that you do, you're going to hit check all. Everything you do to one picture will be applied to the other one. All right. What I always do is I always go to the very bottom and I always start with enable profile corrections and you select your lens that you used. Then you're going to go to straightening. You're going to straighten the picture. You can always start with auto. Auto does a pretty good job at straightening, and there you go. So we're going to show you again. Turning it off, we have a little bit. The lines aren't quite straight. You're going to go auto, and now you've got a nice straight picture. So now when I go to the other one, this one should also be straight. No, we got to hit sync first. Synchronize, and okay. No, it didn't do that. Okay, so we're going to hit auto. <laughs> there you go. We're nice and straight. Enable profile corrections. Okay, so now both pictures. What's going on here? Auto. There we go. There we go. Both pictures are almost the same. They're close enough. We can work with this. All right. Okay, so a quick correction on the syncing. What you want to do is you want to click this little button right here to auto sync. All right. So auto sync means that any adjustment you make on picture one will automatically apply to picture two. So what we've got now is we have both pictures. We have straightened them both. 
They're both pretty much identical. So now we're going to go to the very top and we're going to work our way down each line here to make our edits and our revision. First thing I like to do is, you see we've got some blown out windows here, right? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my highlights down and that brings out a little bit more green from the window. And you will see that in this picture, it's done it as well. All right. So next thing is you want to bring out some of the shadows and a little bit more detail in the picture. So I'm going to bring up my shadows and it depends on how much you want, right? You go all the way to the left, it makes it very dark. You go all the way to the right, it makes it look a little bit fake. So I'm just going to start in the middle and I'm going to move over a little bit. I like them to be like that. Now you've got your exposure, which to me, this perfect, this picture is exposed quite well. Uh, you've also got your white balance and my preference is to leave the white balance as shot, but you can choose automatic white balancing, which didn't really make any difference. You can do daylight white balancing, which makes it a little bit more, a uh, little adds a little bit of yellow, a bit darker cloudy. These are some of the, the, the pre-baked uh, options, but again, I like to go with, I like to go with as shot. Okay. I'm not going to touch the exposure. I'm not going to touch this, uh, the uh, contrast because I'm very happy with the way it is. Then you work your way down. Your whites, you can make it darker. You can bring it up a little bit. You start right in the middle and then, you know, you just work your way over a little bit until you're happy. Same thing with the blacks. You can bring in more detail or you can take away detail. It adds contrast, it takes away contrast. I'm gonna go a little bit that way. Now, clarity is something that some people overuse and I'll show you the difference between, so perfect clarity is right in the center. If you go all the way to the left, you get this sort of oh cloudy, God. like dreamy looking sequence. Yeah, You're you go a dream. all the way to the right and it almost looks like an I HDR and it looks extremely, extremely over processed. So, I'm not going to really do anything with clarity. Maybe a little bit to the right, just on a 13 right there. Vibrance is your color, overall color. All the way to the right, it's ex extremely saturated. Oh. All the way to the left is almost like a black and white. But my dress looks cool with Yeah, that. I'm just going to leave that, and we'll, we'll get to the dress color in a minute. Saturation is the same. Oh, Awful, dude. black and white. We're just going to leave it right in the middle. All right. Black and white. Yeah. Then you've got your tone curve, and again, it starts with highlights. This, you know, going to the right with some of these highlights here can be a good thing. It can give you a little bit of detail. So I'm gonna just move my highlights over to the side there. Now we're gonna talk about the dress and the orange on the wall and the greens outside. All right. So we're gonna start with saturation, the color red, and we can go all the way to the right, and it makes it very red. In this case, I want it really red. All right. But what you have to be careful of, though, is watch Victoria's face, all right? <laughs> so when I'm right in the middle, there's that. But when I go too far to the right, oh. her, her face turns red. What right? the heck happened to yeah. me? Yeah. So we're just going to go a little bit, maybe halfway, and that gives a nice little bit of red to the dress, okay? Then we're going to do orange to bring out some of the colors on the background and the bricks. See all the way here? Makes everything look very strange. Some of my dress. Yeah. So we're just going to get a little bit of orange to the right. And then I'm going to pick the green. And we're going to make the greens outside pop a little bit more. All right. So that's your saturation. Then I take it over to luminance and I do the exact same thing. And you can play with the colors. Do you want your, your dress to be a darker red? You also have to watch the face, right? Again, because it doesn't just change the spot on the dress. And there's other ways to do it, but this is the way I do it. So I'm going to go a little bit to the left, right there. Orange, you play around with it a little bit, it'll make it, you know, again, you're doing global color changes to the picture. So I'm just going to leave it. And then your green, you go there, you go there. That's a little too green. That's not green enough. So I'm just going to go that way. We got a little bit of green. All right. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wand here. And I'm going to just bring down some of the, the, uh, the exposure down here because I think it's a little too bright. So what I'm doing here is I've, I've selected the wand and I'm going to bring my exposure down. And then you can change the size of the wand if you can see where it is. Right now it's very small. And where did it go? 
Very small, now it's a bit bigger. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click and drag around the bottom to this corner. Yeah, and that just brings down your exposure level and you get a little more detail and it's not quite so bright and I think it looks really good. All right, you hit done. Don't forget about taking away the stool. Don't worry, we'll get to that. Don't worry, but we'll get to that. Next thing we're gonna look at is the vignette right here. So if you go all the way to the right, it brightens it up. If you go all the way to the left, you, if you look at the outside edges of the picture, it's brighter, it's darker. When you go to manual, you can add how much vignetting you want. You see, so right there, you see what I'm doing here? So I like, what I like about this is that it puts more focus on the model, okay? So I'm gonna start from the middle and I'm gonna add a little bit more vignetting and I like the way that that looks. For me, for my personal preferences on editing style, this is what I like. Next, we're gonna open the picture in Adobe Photoshop. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this picture, both pictures, and we're gonna open them in Adobe Photoshop. So as you can see, the changes that I made in this picture have been applied to this picture. So they are identical pictures with the, the, the exception of I might have moved the camera a little bit between the pictures, as you can see. It's not quite perfect, but that's okay. We'll fix that. So, so what you're going to do, <laughs> we still have both pictures selected. Make sure. We're going to go photo, edit in Adobe Photoshop. So okay. Photoshop is open. Now, here's what I do. So you've got photo number one and you've got photo number two. All right, we are going to put photo number two in front of photo number one, if that makes sense, as a layer. This is the way I do it, like I said before. I know that there's probably other ways to do it that people probably uh, follow, but I go select, select all, edit, copy, go to your other picture, edit, paste, there. Now you've got your layer. Layer one is Victoria on the stool. We'll go up here and we will go to view layers. Okay, so now that I'm here, what I wanna do next is I wanna duplicate my background. So I'm gonna drag this right here. So now I've got, I'm gonna uh, take this background away. And now all I have is background copy, which is the empty picture. And you've got layer one, which is Victoria. Now what we're going to do is we're going to erase the stool so that all you see is what's behind. So what I want to do is I just want to make this bigger. I'm going to take my magnifying glass and I'm going to zoom in as close as I can to Victoria. All right. Jeez. Then I'm going to take my eraser tool, which is right here and I need to make the eraser very small for what I'm about to do. So now what you wanna do is you wanna start erasing the stool, but be very slow and very careful to not erase the dress. So you wanna keep the edge of that circle very, very close to the dress. So you, now what we're doing is revealing the background. All right, and I touched the dress a little bit there, but that's okay. Can you like fix it? No, it's fine. And now we'll do the other one. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then we're gonna go to this side here, in this corner, there. Now everything that is touching Victoria is now gone. So now we're just gonna erase go the rest. Yeah. Now, as you can see, the color is a little bit different between the two layers, but that's all right, we'll fix that. Oops, a little, <laughs> too far here. a little too far here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna view, fit on screen, then I'm gonna make my wow. eraser a little bit bigger, and do this here. You said bigger, that's tiny. Oh, I meant to do that. All right, so now you can't really see 
the difference between the layers. Now it just looks like she's floating, right? Except for right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make my eraser bigger. And I'm going to bring the hardness down. So now it's going to make a little bit of a softer erase. And I'm just going to take away... I'm just moving the other layer away so that everything is the same. Because watch, what see this brick right here? It's actually a little bit different. So I'm just trying to make it as good as I can. So at a glance, you really can't tell that the two layers are, are off by a little bit. No. Okay, so there you go. So now what you have is you have Victoria floating. Now, yay. Yep, yay. So, so now here what you have is you have your photo of a girl floating and levitating uh, in a room. What I probably should have done on site was I should have moved. There's a chair behind her. I should have moved that chair because I'm going to fix this here because it almost looks like she's using that chair. To sit on. I probably should have moved that chair. Anyways, what you want to do now is you want to hit file and you're going to hit save and then you're going to go back to Lightroom. There we go. Okay, so now it's imported back into Lightroom and it saved the picture. You all right? Yep. Okay, and now you've got a picture of a girl floating, which has gone from picture number one of the room to picture number two of the chair. You've made all of your global changes to the picture. You have erased the dress. I should say the stool in Photoshop. Where did that go? There it is. So there you have your final picture and a little bit of a uh, little bit more information of what you want to do here is you want to add your uh, meta descriptions and keywords to the picture. So what I got here is all my typical uh, keywords that I put in a photo. What I'll call this, I'll add the keywords levitation. I will add levitation photography. Make sure I spell it right. Uh, I will say portrait. I will say creative. Spell it right. Creative photography. Other people might be looking up uh, floating photography. So what you want to do is put your keywords in the picture. Uh, you're going to give it a name. So we are going to call this uh, Levitation Photography. That's okay. 2018. Fix that. Then typically I'll take the file name and I will copy it and I will paste it as the title and I will say a creative levitation photograph photograph with my daughter Victoria okay there you go everything saves automatically you've now got a lesson on how to make a uh, levitation photograph hope you guys have liked it thanks for watching thanks for following Victoria what am I going to say? Whatever, whatever you want to say. Thank you for watching this amazing edit video. <laughs> Great job, Dad. Okay. Thanks Bye. for watching. It's Bye!